Today in the city's commission meeting will now come to order. Uh, would you all please rise for the uh, invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, this evening, the invocation will be given by uh, Commissioner Cindy Trunch Laws. Thank you, Mayor. Would you all please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, please continue to show us what go works you've prepared for us to do and give us the faith to do it for your kingdom, for your will, and for your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so Mr. Black, roll call, please. Mayor Mims. Aye. Commissioner Joseph. Aye. Shaw. Aye. Bear Chow. Aye. Turner Sloss. Aye. Okay, we have a motion then to approve the minutes from the September 6th meeting. So moved, Your Honor. Second the motion, Your Honor. Okay. Been proudly moved to uh, approve and seconded to approve the minutes from the September 6th meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Okay. Ms. Blackshear, do we have any communications um, or anything else that needs to be passed out? <laughs> <laughs> All have been distributed, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. So understand, we do have a um, presentation this evening. And uh, so this one presentation, I'd like to invite Mr. Tom Thompson, Executive Director of the Valence Solutions, a nonprofit for immigrants and refugees in Dayton, and ask them to give a community update. Good evening, sir. How are you? Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. I'm well. Uh, Mayor, Commissioners, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to be here to speak with you tonight. Appreciate it. Uh, my name is Tom Thompson. Not only am I the founder and executive director of Valen Solutions, I'm also the police chief over at Sinclair. Okay. So yeah. I get to spend plenty of time with, uh, with uh, some of your staff here in Dayton. Wonderful people. So. See you a lot over there. Yeah. It's almost like our annex. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I get to see you guys a lot. So at Valen Solutions, our mission statement is adding value to people by confronting inequities, removing barriers, breaking the chains of poverty, and helping them realize their fullest potential. And we do that over the last four years. We've been working with, we're a 501c3, we've been working with over 1,000 uh, immigrants a year with a variety of uh, social determinative health issues, also helping them out with uh, civil and legal cases. And, but that's not why I'm here tonight. We had the opportunity to uh, uh, collaborate with Immigrant Connection and to bring Immigrant Connection here to Dayton, which is a, a low-cost, very high-quality immigrant legal services that's in, in, in big need here in the Dayton area. So I'm going to step away, and I'm going to have the, the, the man who runs it all, Steve uh, Salter, come up and give you the presentation. So again, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Does that count against our five minutes? Um, no, sir. <laughs> you're fine. I promise I'll be brief. I only have two slides. Um, Again, my name is Steve Salter. Thank you very much for uh, having us tonight. Um, so Immigrant Connection, I think I'm supposed to advance the slides. So there we go. So uh, Immigrant Connection is a national organization. They have, uh, and it's the fastest growing organization of its kind. They've been, uh, they're nine years old. Uh, since those nine years, they've opened up over 30 sites. We call our offices sites. Those sites have helped over 24,000 immigrant families in the last nine years. So I'm pretty excited. Uh, when Tom came to me on, um, in March and said, we want to open up legal services, immigration legal services in the Dayton area, uh, we found Immigrant Connection. And they said, uh, if you, if you want to join us and be part of this, we'll help jumpstart you. We did that. And usually it takes three to four months for the Department of Justice to uh, recognize and approve and accredit us. And with Immigrant Connections help, we got it in 30 days, uh, as of July 24th. Um, so I just want to tell you very briefly about who we are, what we do, and how we fit into the community. All right? Um, so I've already talked about uh, who we are. Uh, and Tom just mentioned that we are a low-cost, high-quality immigration legal services. Uh, not to be confused with, and I did when I first started, legal services. We don't do wills. We don't do powers of attorney. We only focus on getting people through um, the simplistic process of immigration law, and I'm saying that sarcastically. Um, so what do we do? I don't want to just very demystify it. All we do is we sit with a client and listen to their case. Um, they 
that tell us what their current situation is, what their immigration status is in the country. We uh, advise them of the risks of taking any action going forward, and then we give them advice on the best pathway forward for them. And that pathway uh, conversation ends in one of three ways. One, we say there is no path forward for you in the law today, and, and nobody can help you. Path two is, yes, there is a way forward, but it's very, very complicated. We're going to uh, refer you to a lawyer. Um, and then path three is, yes, we can help you. We, they sign a retainer, and we're off to the races. In its simplest form, we collect information from them, and then we fill in and, uh, all of the forms, and we send them in along with all of the documentation needed. So pretty straightforward. The, the uh, client will come visit maximum three times, uh, dropping off information, and that's it. So if I will, the, the second slide. Uh, you know, for when I first got started in this, and it was four months ago, in my prior life I was in IT and a businessman, um, I didn't really understand how to answer the question, are you going to help, especially from my Fox News brothers and sisters, are you going to help illegal immigrants? And at first, I didn't know what to say. Um, and, and the answer is, we're going to help all immigrants. If they're in the country, they're here, we're going to help them. Um, to this extent that the law allows. And that seems to placate most people when I, when I say it that way. Um, our target and the Department of Justice specifically tells us what we can and cannot do. And they have I've targeted us to focus on the underserved, the under-resourced members of our community. And so that's why we are a nonprofit. That's why we are both pub uh, um, privately funded as well as through uh, fees. We establish our fees at approximately 10% of what a lawyer will charge. So if you're going to go in and see for initial consultation, you can spend anywhere from $250 to $700, depending on the lawyer. And we charge $40 for a consultation, just to give you an example. Uh, we don't do discounting on the federal fees because that's what, uh, that's what they pay. Um, if you ask why now, well, we actually needed to do this a year ago. Uh, there was another organization prior to us, and that organization closed their doors, went, decided to go in a different direction, and law offices, especially immigration law offices, are already packed. If you talk to ABLE, uh, the, the Legal Aid Society, if you talk to the, the uh, professor at UD who runs the clinic, they're overwhelmed. And so they were very happy to say, as soon as you open, I think we've already have our first five clients and we don't actually open for another 13 days. Um, so that's kind of the why now. And then maybe I'll just close with, how do we fit in the community? Number one, I believe we're additive. We are not competition. As a matter of fact, um, because we target, we don't target the folks that can't afford a lawyer at all. ABLE takes care of that. We don't target the folks that are capable of, of paying for both the law, um, the lawyer, as well as the federal fees. So we positioned ourselves kind of in the middle to aid them as well. Um, we will refer, like I said earlier, to lawyers. Um, we will also get them to refer to us, and uh, Abel's already started saying, we're gonna be sending you folks, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing that when, when Chief Thompson um, came to us, he said, we've got a facility, partner with us, because then not only can we do the legal services, but I would say 10 times out of 10, someone's going to say, can you also help me with, and either mention housing or food or transportation, you name it. And the answer is, yeah, we're in the same office with Tom. Let me go get one of their folks, and um, they'll take over from here. So we have a, a soft launch in T minus 13 days. We open the first of October, first week of October. We're going to do it by appointment only. Um, and uh, it's a soft launch, so we want to see how it goes. And then based on that, we will um, look at either opening for more days, more hours, what have you. So that's it. That's the whole presentation. This was just to let you know we're here. Um, we're excited to be here. We're excited to be there. Um, and if you want, in six months, we can come back and let you know how things are going, if, yeah. if that would be interesting. That'd be great. Okay. But the, hold on, in case any of my commissioners have a question or a comment. So. That's the uh, slide. Okay. <laughs> All right. Commissioner Slaus. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Salter, for being here. And thank you for your leadership. You answer a lot of my questions. The only question that I have, do you work with Catholic Social Services? Yes, absolutely. Okay. All right, great. And I would take it that from this 
venture and the new launch that will take place in 13 days, um, you will work with our um, community engagement department as well in having conversations with our immigrant um, friendly initiative and that division in itself. I'm sure you've had those conversations. Well, we've, we're starting the conversations, great. and uh, I'm open to all advice of who we need to talk to. Okay, great. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for being here. Yes, ma'am. I can answer that, too. Okay, please come to the mic. Okay. Um, That's cue for sit down. <laughs> I, work, I work very closely with, uh, with uh, Welcome Dame. Yep. So Jeanette and Desire and the team, they're probably chomping at the bit to send people our way. I already work with individuals they have, so Great. yeah, we'll be partnering with them. Great. Plenty. Thank you both. Thank you, okay. Mayor. Commissioner Fetchow. Yeah, uh, where are you located? Because up on the slide, it looked like you're down in West Carrollton. On the flyer here, it looks like you're over at the Dream Center, so. Yeah. Right now, we're going to be located in West Carrollton until we can get appropriate space in Dayton. Okay. So, um, uh, the Dream Center is is going to be doing some other building, and then we'll be able to reconsider moving there once that's completed. But right now, when we're starting and when their space is ready, it's not it's not it's not coming to coming at the same time. But the executive director Wes and I are in lockstep on yeah. what we're going to do and when we're going to do it. Okay, awesome. And what bus line is the nineteen? It's on line 19. 19, um, stop uh, SR 741 Mall Park. All right, great. In case you were wondering. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, Commissioner okay. Shaw. Thank you for your work. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Commissioner Joseph. Uh, thank you both for being here. This is an area that, of course, I think a lot about, and all of us hear a lot about. Uh, we all come in contact with our residents who need these sorts of services really desperately. And anything you can do to ameliorate that to help them is just very welcome. So thank you for, for having the idea to bring them here. Thank you, Ms. Schultz, for coming. Uh, we are going to be sending you plenty of folks. So thank you very bring much. Bring them our way. <laughs> okay. My commissioners have said it all. So, again, thank you guys so much. Appreciate you being here. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Good thank seeing you again. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Ms. Plexer, do we have any additions, deletions, or comments to the calendar? I have none, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, Ms. Tixing, deletions... Uh, additions or comments to the calendar? Your Honor, I have no uh, additions or deletions to this evening's calendar. I do have a couple of items I'd like to highlight uh, for you. Um, item number three is a construction contract with CG Construction and Utilities. This is a $2.2 million contract that will replace 5,400 linear feet of um, water piping that was um, installed in the periods between 1871 and 1919. So uh, it had, and, and so CG was um, identified as lowest and best, and this project is being funded with debt and the water capital, asset capital fund. Um, additionally, uh, item number four is J Rank Electric. It's an award of contract for 1.1 million, and this is the replacement of uh, the lighting system standby emergency generator. Very important out at the airport. Uh, we had two bids. This was the lowest and best, and it is being funded through FAA and some aviation cash. So really important. Um, investments into our regional assets uh, in our water system and our airport. <clears throat> Item number um, eight is a, and nine. Eight and nine are pass-through agreements. These are the, can, let me make sure I get the name right, Congressional Community Project Funding, formerly known as Earmarks, uh, for the arcade project that Congressman <coughs> Turner secured as, and the um, 6888 kitchen that Senator Brown secured. We are just passing them through so that they can go into the projects so or the project financing. So that, that's a $4.3 million investment into those projects. So happy to, to do that. Um, the last item, I, well, item number 14 is a first reading of a resolution for, and this is to support our $8.5 million application for the pedestrian bridge across mm -hmm. US 35 mm -hmm. to the West State and Library. We think that we have, we should be like the um, 
the ideal model for this because it's all about reconnecting neighborhoods that had been divided right. by infrastructure and uh, we've got a really strong um, application excited for all the work that civil engineering citywide development uh, and and p and d did to get us to uh, a submittal that will happen at the end of this month and Great. so fingers crossed we will get eight and a half million dollars and be able to start work um, thereafter okay and then finally item back to item number 11 um, the first reading for ordinance number 32059-23 is amending the city's appropriations this is our second revised appropriation that we bring forward it is largely operational to help support the ongoing operations of the organization there are you will see nine and a half million dollars of recommended investments that are going towards street resurfacing, two ladder trucks for the fire department, two right. engines for the fire department, four trash trucks for mm -hmm. um, waste collection, and 20 marked cruisers. We are at a real crisis point with our fleet um, at this point because you'll recall me talking about how disrupted the supply chain has been. And it has been two plus years to get just normal vehicles. We've been recently told that the fire fleet has a three to four year timing for it. And we have got to do some replacement. You know, we wear out our equipment here um, pretty, pretty quickly in, in, these, in these operations. These are critical, this is critical fleet to support the service delivery out in the neighborhood. So that's why you're seeing that it helps us, one, go out and get some gently used equipment that we can get quicker than the two to four years. And it also helps us um, get in line for the queue, for the three to four year queue that it takes. The sooner we are able to demonstrate funding and get in line, the sooner we can you know, hopefully get production. So I'm gonna ask Abby Patel-Jones to come forward, our interim um, budget director to come in and present a more detailed um, presentation for you on all of the revised appropriations and then we can answer any questions you might have. Okay. okay? Thank you. Hello. Good evening. evening. Mayor, done? commissioners, city manager, um, and Ms. Blackshear. Um, so before you this evening is the second revised appropriation as city manager mentioned. Um, the second revised appropriation is 62.3 million or 6.7% higher than the original um, and 45.4 million or 4.8% higher than the first revised. Um, to provide a little bit more detail, um, the 45.4 million increase in the second revised appropriation includes 10 million for funding of the DRP, 15.2 million in various mid-year transfers. Um, that is funding the 9.5 million that the city manager just mentioned for capital investment and capital equipment. And then a 7.6 million in budget increases is to cover grant matches, grant cash matches, and the grant funding. Um, and lastly, 3 million is for uh, various new expenses that are covering um, in the second revised appropriation. I know there are quite a few different numbers, so I will go a little bit more into detail in just a little bit. Um, the second revised appropriation includes 26.6 million transfer to the general fund from the local fiscal recovery fund, um, and that is our 2022's ARPA revenue replacement. Out of the 26.6 million, 10 million is being transferred out from the general fund back to the local fiscal recovery fund to fund the DRP. And out of the remaining 16.6 million, 9.5 million is funding the various capital investments. And so having already addressed the 10 million to fund the DRP, I'll move to the $15.2 million transfer and provide an explanation of use of funds. Out of the 15.2 million, the proposed use of 9.5 million is intended to address, as the city manager alluded to, um, it's for the operational needs related to the ongoing supply chain delays coupled with the aging fleet, specifically in police, fire, and public works. Um, funding these investments now um, not only will improve operational efficiency, but will also illuminate some financial needs in the future. 
Um, therefore, we're proposing the following transfers totaling $9.5 million. $2.9 million for residential and thoroughfare resurfacing. Um, this is to continue our work towards improving uh, Dayton's roads. Um, as you may recall, 61% of the residents who took the Dayton survey um, displayed the dis dissatisfaction with the road condition. And so this will help towards I'm improving. sorry, excuse me, Ms. Jones, I apologize. Oh, Mayor, me. I apologize, excuse me. Is it possible we can get a chart that we can follow you? Because you're going over a lot of, nu lot of numbers. It's very complicated to follow. And I just want to make sure that we are going through the various numbers. Yes, we have it in our packet. Yeah. Yes. But I would like to be able to view it as you're talking through it to make sure that I'm fully understand as well as the public is fully understanding can, what you're going We will through. follow up after the meeting with a chart for you. That, uh, that, But she's reading material that was put in packet for you to review. So, yep. But we can make sure that you have that. Okay. All right. In a please, future, please I would continue. just ask when you please. I asked this before. Just please give us that courtesy. Thank you, Ms. Dixine. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Um, so then uh, the next is $1.7 million, um, as a city manager mentioned, is for the replacement of four trash trucks. The average age for Dayton's trash truck is nine years, which is a nearly the useful life. Um, the industry's average, for example, is 10 to 13 years. Um, and so as mentioned, aging fleet combined with the supply chain delays is creating an urgency in replacing these trash, trash trucks for the Public Works Department. Then we have 3.6 million um, is to replace one new and one used ladder truck, um, as well as one new and one used fire engine in the fire department. Um, the average age for Dayton fire engine is nearly 20 years, um, and ladder truck is 16 years, which per industry standard is at the end of their useful life. And so similar to the trash truck situation, the fire department is also needing to replenish their fleet in order to continue to provide timely response to emergencies. And then lastly, we have 1.3 million for 20 marked cruisers. Funding the cruisers at this time will better align with State of Ohio's procurement timeline, and it will also allow the city to be able to take full advantage of the state term pricing, resulting in, uh, in savings. And so purchasing these cruisers not only will result in savings, but it, it, it will also alleviate the need for budget in 2024. Um, the remaining 5.7 million of the 15.2 is largely funded from the budget savings associated with police and fire ARPA grants. Um, and we're proposing the following transfers. 1.5 million um, is for the city's annual contribution to Phoenix Next. Um, our commitment is 15 million over 10 years. Um, we started this commitment in 2020, so this will be our fourth year towards that commitment. Four million is to fund investments um, uh, in the, the very expensive um, ERP system. We've been funding the ERP system slowly every year, and so this will add to that funding level, which will provide necessary funding and will better equip the city to acquire and implement the citywide technology solution in the near future. And then lastly, we have 213,500 um, is for replacing 35 golf carts. This is in accordance with the golf cart, golf's replacement schedule for golf carts, um, and it is funded from golf's revenue. Um, the nine point, there is also a $9.5 million increase in the expenditures. Um, and so the, the transfers are funding those expenditures uh, in public works, police, and fire departments, the equipment that I just recently mentioned. Um, the second revise also includes an adjustment of $7.6 million to grant budget, including $2.3 million transfer out of aviation operating going into aviation capital, and this is for ATP grant cash match that aviation has applied for. Um, it will be for a concourse B rehab project. Um, if we were to receive the grant um, to accommodate the expense, there is also a $2.3 million increase in the expenditure budget in aviation capital. Um, in addition, we also have $3 million increase in the miscellaneous grant fund, and this is to accommodate any pending grant requests that we currently have um, that we're waiting uh, to receive responses. 
And then finally, there is a $3 million um, increase in various departments, various funds. Um, that includes the largest increase is in uh, Public Works Fleet Department. It's $2.3 million. Um, it is to fund uh, expenses related to fuel. Fuel costs have gone up quite a bit in, in uh, recent history. And so the largest expense, uh, almost $1.9 million of that two point three, is for the fuel increases. Um, the, the additional increases are for um, parts replacement, um, equipment repairs, and facilities improvement. Um, and these increases are all supported by the fleet's revenue. That explains the $45.4 million increases for the second revised appropriation. Questions? Okay. Oh, we'll, we'll hold questions from the commissioners until after the citizens have the opportunity to ask questions, if we have any citizens who wish to, to comment. There are none, Your Honor. There are none. Okay, commissioners, questions? Commissioner yeah. Sloss? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Jones. I appreciate you going through the... Um, the $45 million increase and going line by line. Thank you very much. But I want to make sure I didn't miss it. Could you tell me, I'm really trying to get an understanding of the $26 million for the revenue replacement. From my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, there was $36 million designated for revenue replacement. Is that not correct? $33 million. $33 million. Excuse me. Thank you. And so... We did have revenue replacement that we were able to use prior to, right? Prior to the proposed 26. And so I'm just trying to get the math and get an understanding of out of that 36, the 33, excuse me, the 33 and the 26 that we're now proposing to use. <coughs> help me with the math so I can make sure that I'm following and that. So there, there are really two different revenue replacement. Okay. Um, we're using revenue replacement for two different things. One is to um, calculate the revenue replacement based on the formula that the Treasury provided. Okay. Um, and so out of the $138 million that the city received, the city is able to claim revenue replacement for loss of revenue uh, due to the pandemic. Right. Um, and out of that revenue replacement, then we're using $33 million to fill the gap towards any budgetary needs for the general fund. So because of the way the formula works, and this is complicated, and okay. I'll tell you it's complicated because I've had to sit down several times myself to make sure I'm following our experts here. Okay. Um, we actually can claim a whole lot more than $33 million in revenue replacement because of the formula and the way it was it was calculated going back to 2017 revenues and you recall we had a little bit of an income tax increase mm -hmm. in 2017 mm -hmm. so it really optimized us to be able to claim almost all of the 138 million okay into as revenue replacement mm -hmm. but we planned in the DRP for 33 million of that to cover gaps in our revenue performance. Okay. Right? So we have a whole lot more revenue replacement. It's all going back in to the DRP as okay. allocated. Okay. What I would recommend is that we can um, have Abby sit down with you in between before you vote next week yes, so that are. you can follow it and you can have a chart that updates because there has also been some changes. That we that came about at the end of 22 that we didn't even really know have a handle on until January February of 23. Okay. So we we what we thought we were gonna what you're recalling is what we had presented, but that's changed a bit. But I will make sure that we get some briefings just so you can all follow, try and follow mm -hmm. along with us on this. But it is very complicated because of the federal funding formula. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. I like the glasses, by the way. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> but I will ask, too, when we do that, thank you for extending that courtesy. I think that would be extremely helpful. If at all possible, when we do come back for the second reading, if we could just have a, a quick chart, high level, just so we can follow along, because I would also like the members of the community to have a full yes. understanding. Again, I know it's complicated, but just so we are able to explain it in detail outside of those closed door meetings, one-on-ones that you will have with each of the members of the commission. So, thank you. Okay, thank you. You good? I'm good for, okay. yeah. Commissioner Fairchild. Yeah, um, so similar question to Commissioner Turner-Sloss. 
the 26.6 that are is revenue replacement 10 is dedicated to i think um date and recovery projects we already identified that means 16.6 are going to new projects are the are we pulling does that mean we're reducing the 102 or are we is, is it falling into those five buckets oh. We're not reducing the uh, Dayton Recovery Plan funding. The Dayton Recovery Plan funding remains the same. Okay. Um, and you are doing the math correctly. 26.6 is 2022's revenue right. replacement. Um, that after transferring the 10 million to back to the DRP leaves us with 16.5. And out of the 16.5, we are transferring 9.5 to fund the capital equipment and the uh, resurfacing for public works, police, and fire. That. Um, uh, leaves us with a little over seven million, or about seven million. Yeah. Out of that seven million, um, as you recall, 2023's budget has a gap of four million dollars, and so we're using four million to fund that gap for 2023, okay. and that leaves us with three million dollars, um, which will drop to the bottom line, um, and will add to the cash reserve. Okay. So that 9.5 is coming out of one of the five buckets. It's, it's not going. It's coming out of the revenue replacement. Right. The 33, right? The 33 million. It's coming out of the 33 million. Right. Correct. Okay. All right. Um, and then what are, what where's the income for the other 19 million 26.6 of the 45 is revenue replacement so there's another 19 million right so there's a bit of a nuance uh, with the appropriation uh, when we have transfers on the appropriation um, you will see uh, there is a line for the budget on the appropriation and then there's a line for transfers out um, transfers outs are counted as an expense because we're transferring to some different fund but then that different fund also has an expense budgeted for those transfers out so they show up twice on the appropriation and that's why you're not adding up the math when you try to get to 45.5 million or 45.4 million um, with the 26.6. Because 9.5 of the 26.6 is showing up twice. And same thing is happening for the uh, aviation grant. When we transfer out of aviation operating and when it goes to aviation capital, there's an also, also an expense budgeted in aviation capital for the same grant. Okay. So, Commissioner, were you asking about the other revenue sources for the 45? Yes. Right. So it's a combination of things with regards to um, increasing our authority. Because remember, we never put all of our cash in authority that we have, right? right? So it's still within our planned budget, but it's increasing our authority. There's also grants that we're getting that we're bringing into the organization, but we can't spend anything until we've appropriated for those grants, right? And so if you go back to your packet, right. you can follow along where the funding sources are that come to that 45 million. But we can also make sure we cover that in, okay. in a briefing this week. Yeah, because I, I mean, I'm looking at it and it looks like 5.5 comes from savings from police and fire, mm -hmm. 2.7 and then 2.3 from our, in um, aviation, and then another 2.3. So there's, I think a small gap of, what's that? Seven, six, six million, mm -hmm. which maybe we're just saying that we're increasing our are we are we seeing higher re income revenue a little bit that we can we've had cost savings okay okay all right well i will look forward to having that conversation in between the meetings uh, limber your brain up when you get there okay <laughs> so i will i'll be glad to it is a it's, it's very complicated yes all right thank you abby
Okay, you good? I'm good. Okay, Mr. Sheldon, you good? Mm -hmm. Mr. Sheldon? Oh, I can't resist the chance to say a couple things. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, I just want to thank you for your work. Uh, something about, uh, you know, I, I come from a little bit of a depot maintenance background, and the, the, the spending a little bit of money now to get newer equipment, better equipment, is really going to save us in, in maintenance time, uh, in downtime of, of older equipment, in cost for parts, and just, you know, what, our, what the devil is, is overtime of labor right now. So I really appreciate the administration thinking ahead and doing this because it's, it's absolutely the right thing to do to spend the money now. Um, and also, whenever buying vehicles, you know I'm thinking about electric vehicles, but I realize <laughs> no. this is another couple of generations, <laughs> another couple of generations down the road. Uh, so that it's perfectly okay, and I'm glad to see our folks get the equipment they need here. So I, I also, Commissioner, I did check into the electric golf cart. Yes. Um, communities, hills prohibit us at this point to do efficient uh, to work efficiently with battery but we'll continue to keep it on the radar excellent okay. thank you as battery technology improves mm -hmm. thank you all right okay thank you okay we're thank good you. no thank you so much appreciate it thank you miss jones yeah. okay so then uh, may i have a motion then to approve the city manager's recommendations uh, your honor i move to approve city manager's recommendations and i'll second that motion Okay, it's been probably moved and seconded to approve the city manager's recommendations. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Okay. All right. Uh, legislation, please, Ms. Blackshear. First reading, emergency resolution number 6748-23, authorizing the acceptance of a grant from the State of Ohio Bureau of Workers' Compensation in an amount not to exceed $40,000.00, on behalf of the city of Dayton and declaring an emergency. Your Honor, being declared an emergency, I move for the immediate passage of resolution number 6748-23. Second the motion, Your Honor. Okay, it's been probably moved and seconded to declare uh, resolution number 6748-23 as an emergency. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Okay. First reading ordinance number 32059-23 amending the city's appropriations for the year 2023. First reading ordinance number 32060-23, amending revised code of general ordinance, RCGO, sections 36.11B3 and 36.46, enacting RCGO section 36.49, and repealing ordinance number 29103-95 and former RCGO sections 36.11B3 and 36.46. Second reading ordinance number 32058-23, amending the Willow Hills Incentive District Ordinance number 31853-20 describing the public infrastructure improvements made or to be made to directly benefit the parcels from which improvements are declared to be a public purpose, authorizing the amendment of a tax increment financing agreement and approving related matters. Mayor Mims. Aye. Commissioner Joseph. Aye. Shaw. Aye. Fairchild. Aye. Turner Sloss. Aye. First reading, resolution number 6749-23, authorizing the submission of an application for funding consideration by the United States Department of Transportation under the Reconnecting Communities and Neighborhoods RCN program. First reading, resolution number 6750-23, authorizing the necessary tax levies requesting the advance payment by Montgomery County, Ohio, to the city of Dayton, Ohio, for tax monies collected for 2024, certifying the same to the county auditor. First reading resolution number 6751-23, authorizing the city manager to apply for, accept, and enter into a water pollution control loan fund WPCLF loan agreement on behalf of the city of Dayton, Ohio for construction of the water rec reclamation facility phase two anaerobic digester project and designating a dedicated repayment source for the loan. 
First reading resolution number 6752-23, declaring the intention to appropriate real property interests in parcels 1-T1, 1-T2, 1-T3, 2-SH, 5-SH, 6-T, 8-T, 11-T, 11-T, 15-T, 16-T, 21-T, 22-T, 31-T, 33-T, 34-T, 36-SH, 36-T, 41-T, 42-T, 45-T, 47-T, 57-T, 56-T, 57-T, 58-T, 74-T, 75-T, 76-T, 83-T, 91-SH, 99-T, 100-T, 101-T, 102-T, 109-T, 110-T, 111-T, 112-T, 113-T, 115-T, 117-T, 122-SH, 122-T, 123-T, 127-SH, 127-T1, 127-T2, 128-SH, 128-T, 128-T, 129-T, 130-SH, 133-T, 134-SH, 134-T, 136-T, 137-SH, 137-T, 138-SH, 138-T, 139-SH, 139-T, 140-T, 144-SH, 144-T, 145-SH, and 145-T in connection with the North Main Street Safety Improvements Project. Second reading resolution number 6746-23, adopting the, the Dayton Active Transportation Plan. Mayor Mims. Aye. Commissioner Joseph. Aye. Shaw. Aye. Fairchild. Aye. Turner Sloss. Aye. That is all, Your Honor. Okay. And I was going to ask you to read uh, all those numbers again. <laughs> Don't read that privilege next week. <laughs> okay. All right, so uh, do we have any citizens who are registered to speak? Yes, Your Honor. There's one citizen who has registered to speak. I would like to state that there is a three-minute time limit. As you address the commission, we ask that you state your name and address for the record. At that time, I will turn on the green light. When the green light comes on, you will have three minutes to speak. After you have spoken two and a half minutes, a yellow light will come on. You will have 30 seconds remaining to speak. When the red light comes on, you will be asked to cease your comments and to take your seat. To the audience and attendance, I ask everyone to be respectful by refraining from any utterance, gesture, or conversation that will prevent the City Commission from hearing the speaker's comments. I call to the podium Mark Fritz. Your name and the record, your name and address for the record, please. Thank you. My name is Mark Dennis Fritz. Woda Mingzashe Furi Ma. I am homeless. You may begin. Hey. Good evening, sir. My name is Mark Dennis Fritz. I renounce my citizenship to the United States of America. I decry the vile villainy of the American government, the decrepitude of the American society, and the absurdity that the nation that prides itself as the birthplace of the modern democracy is aiding and abetting a known Nazi regime to fight a war against a rival superpower on the other side of the world. Now, after I have said these things, I acknowledge that they have no legal power whatsoever. Why? Because according to federal law of the United States of America, an American can only renounce citizenship while inside a United States of America embassy or consulate that is situated in a foreign nation. 
What does that mean? It means that no American, no matter how anti-American they may be, cannot, under any circumstances, renounce their U.S. citizenship until they leave the damned country. To declare independence and to use force against the state is not an act of war. It is terrorism. I, being of sound and reasoned mind, do not seek to participate in acts of terror, acts of war, or any act of violence. Everywhere I look inside this country, I see a world corrupted by lies and deceit, and I, being of sound mind, intend fully and completely to flee this vile, wicked nation and renounce all ties, including citizenship, to it. I have spent months trying to do just that, being met with repeated failure and delay beyond my immediate control. My situation is complex, and I will not describe the details here. However, I want it to be of official record that I am not interested in participating in civil war, though I do think it the only course to fix the vile and wicked things that so infest this nation. I seek to flee and let your nation and your peoples, so deviled and riled with hatred for each other, do what you wish to do without my intervention. Let your solutions be your own. There may have been so many solutions attempted in many thousands of years of human existence that I do seek to avoid such failures to be repeated in my vicinity. Your fate be your own. I want nothing of it. Walk in peace if you can. I have my doubts, but the world would be blessed if such doubts are proven wrong. Thank you for your comments, Thank sir. You for your comments, Mr. Fitz. That is all, Your Honor. Okay. I'm in 16. Any closing comments? I have none, Your Honor. Okay, Ms. Blackshear, any closing comments? I have none, Your Honor. Okay, Commissioners, uh, closing comments. Commissioner Terrence Loss. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Very briefly, I'd like to thank Mr. Thompson um, from the Immigrants and Refugees Valens Solutions Organization for being here this evening, as well as Mr. Steve Salter from Immigrant Connection. And then I will also like to congrat congratulate you, Mayor, as well as Mr. Beckham for a successful second annual youth summit. It was well attended. I took a couple of notes myself. And again, I just want to commend you for your leadership and uh, you and Mr. Beckham and all of the partnerships in making that uh, some summit a success. And then I will also thank, thank like- Thank you for being there. Yes, yes, sir. Yep. Then I would also like to congratulate uh, the Belmont neighborhood on the successful Belmont days. And that is all I have. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner Fatchow. Yeah, uh, echo Commissioner Turner's last comments. Congratulations to you, Mayor, and to you, uh, Mr. Beckham, for such a great event and for all the young people and the announcement uh, there at the press conference. So uh, we look forward to the ongoing work, investment in our young people. Uh, I want to give thanks to the um, 1,500 volunteers, the 8,500 8, participants at the United States Air Force Marathon, particularly volunteers Chris and Kyle, who escorted me on the, the marathon route. There were runners from all 50 states and from 18 countries. Hmm. So it's a, one of our top <coughs> premier events, so glad for everyone who helped make that a success. Um, 11 days to Tour de Gem. So I encourage you, if you haven't already signed up, to do so and to plan how you want to contribute to um, helping to support our nonprofits in the community and how you might uh, line up to get some of those mayor's pancakes. <laughs> and finally, if you don't have anything else to do on Saturday, Stivers has their 24-hour challenge, and this is where the, uh, the theater students go from scratch on uh, th starting on Thursday night, and on Thursday night, and then Friday night, they write, stage, um, write scripts, rehearse, and then perform on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And they all do one act. Uh, there's like seven classes and do uh, uh, one act um, scenes that they create themselves over 24 hours. So great opportunity to come and see some of our young, the creativity of our young people in action. Yep. Mr. Shaw. Thank you. Thank you yeah, so much. That was great. The helicopters woke me up for the, <laughs> for the marathon. I had no idea. I thought if we were under attack by something. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> I, too, want to thank uh, all the folks that put on the Belmont Day. The moment still Commissioner Joseph Thunder. I know he's going to talk about that. We were asked to do some presentations and whatnot. And then Edgemont Solar Gardens had a, another event where we were asked to make some remarks. It's uh, remarkable the kind of work that they're doing in Edgemont, with the, the garden and with the fishery that's going to uh, come online and just so many other things that uh, they've done in a very short period of time. We want to thank them. Also, uh, I attended the Building Futures graduation with the Building Trades and AFL-CIO, nine graduates, uh, on their way to make a great living and, and uh, 
a, a great career in the building trades. Um, and then I have to thank the DDC for their great work in attracting oh, Joby yeah. to our yeah. community. We're going to yeah. be making electric uh, yeah. flying taxis <laughs> uh, at the airport, which is just uh, perfect for, for our community, bringing back uh, high-tech manufacturing to this community. And thank the city manager for your great work and your team also. Yeah. And that's a lot. How many jobs is that, Commissioner? <laughs> 2,000. 2,000 <laughs> jobs. Right, I see. Thank you. Yeah. I buried the lead. <laughs> yeah, 2,000 jobs. That's uh, yeah. fantastic. So, here yeah. we go. Hi. Thanks. Uh, you think we met uh, at the age of the Jetsons with those that's flying right. taxis. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Commissioner Joseph. Mayor, I'm, I'm curious to see if they make that little Jetsons vehicle noise. That would be the oh, yeah. icing have, on the cake. Do that, oh, I'm not going to try it here, but <laughs> watch the Jetsons. You'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, my colleagues have covered almost everything. I want to echo, because it's my neighborhood, the thank you to everyone who worked so hard on Belmont Days. Uh, it was a team of folks who put it together. It wouldn't have been possible without their work, without volunteers, uh, without the business community that was so generous there, without city workers and city help. Uh, I appreciate all who came out. It was a great time. It's getting better and better. It's not, uh, you know, we keep working toward the day when Belmont Days is actually plural again. It's just been a Saturday for now. Uh, but uh, most of us, a lot of us remember when it was plural. And we're working slowly to get back to that. And this year was a great step toward that. So I want to thank everyone who, who played a role in that. Uh, everybody covered most of everything else. Uh, I do want to go back to the calendar items. One thing that I had made a note and didn't mention, I want to mention a grant to Homeful organization that really works with homeless folks. Uh, this is another piece of our ongoing effort to eliminate chronic homelessness. And it's a, it's, it has to be an ongoing battle because of the nature <coughs> of the problem. And I just want to highlight the fact that we're continuing that fight and we're working with great partners like Homeful. And I want to thank the organization, the city organization, for continuing to keep their eye on the ball on that. Mm -hmm. That's all I got. Thank you. Okay. In the same spirit of so much uh, great teamwork, and, uh, and so many good partners helping out with the uh, city of Dayton and all the activities throughout this community. I wanted to highlight just a few more things. Uh, some of those things have been mentioned already. But again, the great, great teamwork and uh, with the team dealing with the mayor's second annual youth uh, summit. Uh, again, you've already heard so many great things that happened through that process. Uh, young people are still interested, as we see, primarily in looking at the session that we're dealing with mental health. It's a big challenge, uh, not just uh, here in the city of Dayton, but throughout the nation uh, for adults as well as young people. Uh, one of the other sessions we had was dealing with um, the actual ment mentoring, uh, jobs and careers, and of course, civic engagement. And uh, the young people, again, were very, very uh, engaged in that. The challenge that I gave to them is to be their best self. You know, try to come to school every day, uh, prepare, do the best they can in all that they do. And, and take that energy and those skills into the classroom as, all, as well as on the football field, uh, track, golf course, if you're doing that as well. But showing the parallel between the work ethic that you develop and the things that you like as well as some of the things that you may not like in terms of the quality of life opportunities that you're creating for yourself and your family and, of course, this community. Uh, United Way, uh, we had a great roundtable conversation, uh, myself and the um, – uh, Mayor from uh, Xenia were featured speakers on that panel. And of course, we talked about uh, the tour to gym, you know, and that whole process, um, uh, Mr. Fairchild. So, again, everyone's looking forward to being a uh, participant in that process. And of course, uh, last week we had the Mayor's Neighborhood Tour in Arlington Heights. A lot of fun, as always, a lot of great information. You know, I had the opportunity to swear in some young people in terms of their student government at Richard Allen School uh, last, uh, I don't know, I'm not going to say what day it was, because these days sort of run together. Uh, and then also the city safety fair that we had uh, this past week. And then the opportunity to be at the Paul Lawrence Dunbar High School Alumni Association Wall of Fame. I went to help. Uh, support and recognize some individuals who were there, and I wound up being the MC. So, but it was it was fun. <laughs> but uh, uh, they had a lot of fun, and, and so did I in the whole process. Uh, I want to thank CareSource, AT and T, Alta Fiber, and Spectrum for sponsoring the um, Mayor's uh, Youth Summit. And again, uh, we had so many other sponsors and volunteers throughout this whole process. I wish the whole team could be here to be recognized for the great work that they did. So all the schools that can recognize and support, uh, of course, we had CJ, we had DECA, Mount Street Academy, all the Dayton Public Schools. I'm not going to start listing all six of them. I mean, miss one. But um, the immigrant school as well. But it was just a great, great affair. And I thank all my commissioners for being there, offering support. 
uh, it could not happen without you. So thank you so much. And with no further business to come before this commission, this meeting is adjourned.